Hello and welcome. Once again, we'll listen to British commentator Matt Goodwin. This time on the reasons behind populism's surge. Let's hear it. So what is driving national populist parties forward? I think there are four things. The first is a palpable sense of distrust. Distrust with the mainstream political parties, distrust with the political institutions, which, to be frank, have been built around the interests of a graduate urban minority. If you look at Western democracies today, some academics call them diploma democracies because they're really dominated by a minority university educated elite that's been shaping those systems around their values, around their interests, around their priorities. And I think that's really a big part of what's going on, because if you look at the experts and elites today, they've often presided over a long line of failures. Think about the great financial crash, the failure to, to regulate financial services. Think about the forever wars in Afghanistan, Iraq, Syria and elsewhere, a long line of foreign policy disasters. Think about mass migration, the failure to secure the borders, the failure to curb radical Islamist terrorism, the failure to integrate newcomers into our wider society. So I think distrust, often anchored in legitimate grievances, is really important. I think it goes hand in hand with the second thing. Fears over the destruction of our national communities, our nation states, our ways of life. And I think these, these fears are really palpable. Many people in the West today, when they're looking at things like the southern border in the United States, the small boats crisis in the English Channel, they're looking at what's happening to Italy with migration from northern Africa, and they're looking at what's happening in some of those estates on the outskirts of Paris in France, they're asking themselves, actually, not just can we absorb record levels of migration, can we absorb the refugee crisis, but actually, is this now beginning to threaten our national way of life, our community, our collective memory, the things that make us who we really are. And those fears over destruction, those fears over the end of civilization, I think are really palpable. I've talked before about how I think Western nations are approaching a civilizational moment, uh, a time when people really begin to worry about whether the things that make us a we are still actually there in society and whether our leaders are willing to defend and promote those things going forward. If you like what you're seeing, please consider liking this video and subscribing to our channel. A few clicks can make all the difference to us and help the channel grow. Also, we've recently crossed the 1,000 subscribers mark. To you, our subscribers, we'd like to say thank you. We hope to provide you with a lot more and better going forward. And the third set of concerns, I think, relates to this notion of what academics call relative deprivation. I'm not worried that I'm being left behind. I'm actually worried about how my group is being left behind relative to others in society, particularly the majority white group that's seen as being suspicious, is now described as an oppressor class that's allegedly being racist and uh, discriminatory towards minority groups in Western societies. And you can see this, for example, in our model of multiculturalism, where often today's elite will say minority groups can celebrate, can promote, can protect their distinctive identities, their ways of life and their culture. But when they talk to the majority group, they'll say, well, you know, actually your identity, your history, your values, they must be reshaped around these universal liberal themes like diversity, multiculturalism, or in fact, people are told that they should be ashamed of those identities and values, that there's something wrong with them, that Western nations were racist, uh, were prejudiced, are institutionally uh, discriminatory towards minority groups. And so there's an imbalance in how people's identities are talked about among the elite. And lastly, you know, if you look across the West today, what I think we've entered into is what political scientists would call an era of de-alignment, an era in which the old bonds between the big parties and voters are now breaking down. You know, we're not in the 1960s, 70s and 80s anymore. The golden age of representative democracy is completely over. So what we have instead is a much more volatile political environment. Voters are looking at politics a bit like a consumer in the supermarket. They don't have those tribal allegiances anymore. And this new era of de-alignment that's really created a perfect storm for national populist parties, for parties that ultimately want to prioritize the interests, the culture, and the values of the majority group against an elite they argue is neglectful, insular and self-serving. And until we actually begin to address those deeper concerns, and until we begin to really solve the grievances that many voters have, entirely legitimate grievances over mass migration, 
insecure borders, Islamist terrorism. These populist parties, they're only going to get stronger and stronger. Distrust of mainstream political parties and institutions. Destruction of community. Relative deprivation. The sense that one's own group is being left behind. Political dealignment. The end of party loyalty. All of these are legitimate concerns, and none of them seem to be addressed. That itself is a symptom of a clear divide between the elites and the people. This divide was detailed in another video that we made. These concerns have not been addressed and continue to be either downplayed or utterly dismissed by the elites. As long as that continues, populism will continue to grow. The political establishment has not been able to reconfigure or even understand voters. As a result, they do exactly the opposite of what they should be doing. By dismissing the votes on populist parties and refusing to acknowledge those parties' power, they reinforce people's grievances. The more they refuse to negotiate and dismiss everything as far right, the political establishment will lose more and more votes and populism will become even more mainstream. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you next time.